by the time that you have watched this video, either you are about to engage in the execution phase of your service learning project, or perhaps you have recently completed it. Either way, the purpose of this video is to get you thinking about what is the point and what is the difference between a service learning project uh, and just plain old community service because you are getting community service hours, but unlike other community service projects, you're getting something else out of it as well. So you've heard me say this before, but I'm going to say it again. In a democratic republic, which is what America's government is, the people hold the political power. However, and I have mentioned this before, just because you live in America and you are of voting age, isn't a guarantee that you'll actually have that power or any power at all, because the only power that you'll ever have is the power that is offered to you and you take it and you actually use it because someone who has power, but doesn't use it, doesn't take advantage of it is no different than someone who has never offered it in the first place. How do you use the power that's offered to you as an American citizen? Participate. Political participation is what legitimizes democracy. Democracy is a government that's controlled by the people. But if the people don't exercise that control, then the government, the Leviathan, is just going to do what it wants. If it's in your interest, great. And if it's not, well, too bad because you weren't yanking on the chain because you weren't participating. But if you remember way back from unit one, there is a difference of opinion on what participation means. Every 15 to 20 years, it kind of depends on the generation, but every 15 to 20 years is another generation. And the media likes to apply names to those generations. One of the least well-defined generations is the millennials. The millennials is anyone born from 1980 till whenever. That means I, and depending on what year you're watching this, and you are both the same generation, a millennial. Baby boomers, however, are much more defined. That is anybody who was born pretty much right after World War II, but before the 60s. And these groups have very, very uh, opposed visions of what it means to participate politically. Baby boomers prefer a more duty oriented form of political participation. Essentially just vote, be informed, study, learn, research, but the only action that's necessary or the only action you should even do at all is just voting. You can run for office as well, but that's it. Either run for office or just vote. And that's it. That's the baby boomer duty oriented version of participation. Millennials, however, disagree. Millennials believe that voting is good, but it's the minimum. It's for people with very limited skills, resources, or even motivations. What if voting isn't enough? What if you vote and you don't get what you want? Are you supposed to just accept that? And that's how millennials feel. They feel like, no, they want to actually go make it happen. If there's something that's important to them, they don't just hope and wait that who they voted for will do it. They go out and do it. They make it happen. And despite the baby boomers and even generation X calling millennials kind of lazy and couch surfers and just play too many video games. In actuality, this kind of political engagement requires far more time, far more knowledge, uh, far more education, literacy, awareness to be so politically engaged that you're out there and joining interest groups, joining protests, engaging in something like a service learning project, where not only are you doing something good for your community, but you're trying to figure out what you can learn from that. 
What can you learn about the government or about society around you from your experience? Reflecting upon your experience, uh, being the one to initiate the planning itself rather than just jumping on board someone else's idea of what needs to be done. Actually showing true leadership skills is a cornerstone of millennial type engaged citizenship. Millennials, unlike the baby boomers, are far more interested in joining interest groups. Interest groups are groups who have the intention of influencing public policy uh, through expanding freedoms, promoting labor laws, increasing election participation rates are just some, but not all of the examples of the goals that interest groups have. And there's a lot of very different types of groups. There are some groups that have some kind of cause, like, for example, they're worried about how much drunk driving happens and the number of deaths that that causes. So mothers might form a group like the Mothers Against Drunk Driving. That's an interest group that's organized around a cause. Uh, there are interest groups that are based around an industry, about trying to protect the health of an industry, not just the employees, but the employers as well, to make sure whatever product or service it is that that industry specializes in uh, continues to be healthy, continues to be an industry that thrives and is successful over time. Uh, another popular interest group is labor-based interest groups. This is the type of interest groups that are looking out for uh, the wages of employees, of the benefits of employees, uh, the treatment, uh, m abuse of employees, uh, anything that's focused on what employees have to go through, workers. And there are so many other types of interest groups. And to be clear, not all interest groups are good. There are some that have very sinister motives because again, all an interest group is, is the group that's trying to influence public policy. Whether it's with awareness or donating to campaigns or buying their own advertisements and information to spread to people. My point is, is when you leave this class, I hope that one of your takeaways is that you made a difference. It might have been small, maybe just a few people, but it was a difference that you made on your own. Did you have help from me? Yes. Did you work with others? Yes. But it was your idea. It was your cause. It was important to you and you made it happen. Maybe I gave you the tools, but those tools are just going to sit there gathering dust on the desk if you don't pick them up and use them. And that's what you are doing with the service learning project. You are becoming an engaged citizen who doesn't just sit and wait for someone else to take care of your needs. You are going out and doing it for yourself. And that is a skill, a confidence, an experience that no one can take away from you and can apply to anything that you do with your life. Thank you. And if you have any questions, please let me know in class.